This is Checking In With. My name is Dennis Callow. My name is Bethany Watson. And I'm very excited because today we are talking to someone I hold very dear to my heart and you do too. This is an interview we've been wanting to do for years. A long time. Yeah. 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 Uh, And this person, you may know him uh, from the, uh, uh, The Last Drive-In with Joe Bob Briggs. Yep. He is the musical director. He's directing the music. He's also an actor on the show. He's also in the director studio. Studio. He's written, produced. Brooklynite. I'm sure he dances, (laughs) although we don't know that for sure. (laughs) I'm pretty sure he does. I'm going to also say a horror film scholar. Yeah. Because I feel like he he will wipe the floor with you in terms of knowledge of films. Absolutely. Not even just horror films, but films in general. Everybody, welcome John P. Brennan. Welcome. Thank you so much. Wow, thank you for having me. There's so many things to address in that intro. I feel like. <laughs> so do you dance? That's do you the dance? First I dance like there's no tomorrow. I yes. love dancing. And yeah. uh, I, I I would say that I have slight rhythm. <laughs> I, I, get, I get there. Now here's the slight, thing. Just slight. Slight rhythm. It's, it's not as bad as most people, but it's all right. <laughs> uh, you strike me as someone who is secretly a good dancer. And I do, it's, there's just a vibe you give off. Well, that, thank like, you. You, you got it. You're going to be fine. <laughs> well, I'll at tell a you wedding, where, it's going to be okay. At a wedding, I dance like crazy. Yeah. I, I learned how to dance and and let my shell, you know, broke out of my shell at a Parliament Funkadelic concert when I was on <laughs> X. I was on ecstasy and I, I said, I'm allowed to dance. And I started going, I started counting, counting my toes, how many times I was. Yeah, it was amazing. So ecstasy will amazing. absolutely get you out of your shell. Oh, yeah. Oh, my hundred percent. A hundred percent. Speaking of weddings, you were just at a wedding with the music. Yes. Band, right. And oh, yeah. that's one thing that just to start with is. The, the the last drive-in and, and and everyone there, you've created such an amazing community. And community mm-hmm. is everything beyond accolades, beyond like what you do in your career. Having a strong community is amazing. I'm actually part of the Discord because it's a free Discord. You could just join it, join in, and it's insanity. There's so many people. So, how was that wedding? What was it like being at a mutant fam wedding? It was one of the best weddings I've ever been to. No joke. Yeah. It was so great. And um, they 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 just did so many different things that a lot of weddings wouldn't do. They showed nothing but trouble yes. in the, <laughs> the courtyard while other people were dancing. So if some people wanted to watch the movie, other people wanted to dance, other people wanted to eat. There were so many activities going on. And uh, it was odd for us during the cocktail hour because we were playing and everybody was like inside eating. But later on, Joe Bob came up. He's like, man, you guys were great. And everybody was grooving to you. We were like, all right. I'm okay. glad that at least we went over well, you know? Yeah. Now, were you the official wedding band? So we they had it set up where we did an hour during the cocktail hour. Cool. And then uh, there was a DJ after us. So, but we did, we played as like, there was, uh, everybody was like filled the room. It was crazy. And um, it was just a little odd because we were not allowed to cuss. Man. You said oh. in the beginning we're allowed to cuss on on the show, oh, yeah. so I'm allowed totally. to say the fuck word yeah, or that shit. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah the and, fuck word. Yeah, say the it all fuck, word. fuck shit, yeah. piss, whatever. Just yeah. But go nuts. We, we, Joe and Callie, who uh, invited us down along with Joe Bob Darcy, um, they were just like, all right, uh, so for our grandmother, just you know, don't do songs like the lizard <laughs> took a shit. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, it's hard because every other word, oh fuck it, fuck, fuck, fuck it, fuck totally. it. You know, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. But we we made it happen. I think I only said uh, breasts and uh, something else that was like could have been sort of misconstrued as a cuss word. But I mean, right. look, if grandma has a problem with breasts, mm. grandma has a problem because that's <laughs> anatomical right. and she needs to like yeah. be cool with anatomy. So that's actually yeah. a really bad reflection on grandma. Everyone breasts is not a curse word. No. Breasts right, is a it's... beautiful part of the female anatomy that yeah. they're very nice and yes. squeezable and they, but provide, it and they provide life. Yes. They're life giving organs. Yes. Milk you know? and all that. Yeah. Are they organs? Milk? Am I right? Yeah, I, yes. <laughs> Mam- I think they are. Mammary glands. Mammary glands. That's it. They're glands. They're glands. <laughs> they're a glandular organ. It's, um, yep. it's, no, that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. And like, how did that happen where you got approached by the mutant fam? Did that happen through the Discord? Like, was it a letter to Joe Bob? Like, no, how did this all happen? They got engaged at the Memphis Jamboree on stage. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, oh, okay. Callie surprised Joe and they were like, brought up on stage and they got engaged and then um that week they, while we were still there they said we would love to have you play our wedding yeah and then they reached out during that next year and 
hired us. It was fucking amazing. I, That's it's like, so awesome. I'm yeah. glad they hired you. Yeah. Be you what got paid, yeah. right? You got paid. Yeah, they, they, okay, they, great. They, they treated us like a wedding band. They said, hey, we, how much is your rate? We gave them a fair rate and it See, was just great. like really cool. Yeah. Because there are times like if you're in the public eye, a lot of times you get invited to people's weddings. Mm -hmm. You get asked mm -hmm. to officiate weddings and like you want to be able to be there and be supportive because obviously these people support you. But you also don't want to give away free labor on a weekend. So it is nice that right. they're like respectful <laughs> right, enough right. to yeah. actually hire you. Yeah, yeah. Give you they were. And, and, you know, because a couple of the guys had to take off uh, on a, their day jobs and stuff to do it. So they were just sure. like, all right, just give us a fair uh, amount. And we did. We worked it out. It was great. It was, Amazing. Honestly, it was more like a party than anything. And uh, I would do it again in a oh, heartbeat. That's so great. Anybody else wants to hire the big feet for their <laughs> wedding band? <laughs> I love We're ready. The big feet is it's also the best name. name. Yeah. It's such a good name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so speaking of like the mutant fam and community, you know, I, when I was growing up uh, and you know, we, and you and I have similar stories, not stories, but we have similar upbringings where we grew up in New York city. So my education for, you know, horror was Joe Bob. Like I watched, you know, I watched um, uh, the TNT show. Like Monster, Monster Vision. Vision. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I watched Monster Vision. So that was like that plus like art house movies was how I learned about film. So it's like Criterion yeah. Collection <laughs> and Joe Bob. Yeah. And so like, how did you start? Wh wh when did the interest in film start for you? Because you're a huge. I mean, you're a movie guy. Yeah. I love that, movies. Yeah, movies are the best. Like they are the yeah. absolute best. And you're also a musician. So like I went the musician route for a while, but then I went to filmmaking because I was like, I always wanted to be a filmmaker and like got sidetracked by music. But what started you with film? Um, yo, I was a kid. I must have been either Star Wars or Indiana Jones or both. When I was a little kid, I remember I would watch Empire Strikes Back over and over and over again to the point where my grandmother's like, don't you have this memorized? Like, why do you have to watch this movie again? <laughs> and I was like, I, I don't know. I just did something about this movie that I love. And um, so that sort of grew into other things like, you know, at that time in the 80s, when I was a little kid, there were so many great movies coming out. Weird yeah. Science was one that blew my mind as a little boy, not just because there were bre mammary Breast. glands. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the givers it was just of life. Yeah. funny, and I wanted to, uh, for some reason, when even when I was a little kid, I was like, I want to go to a party like that where it's yeah. just nuts. And so um, there was just a way to live uh, through movies in ways that I wasn't living as a little boy and then sort of have those things inform my life and the lines and then make friends through just like saying a line like Star Wars. When you're a little kid yeah. on the playground, you say a line and all of a sudden you have a friend who says the other line back to you and suddenly you're playing Star Wars. Exactly. So that just, yeah. you know, that and then but then to get into horror, I was scared as a little <laughs> kid. I, I couldn't even watch Thriller. Yeah. Thriller, I would hide my eyes and run away. Yeah. That was a um, scary video. I mean, scary. I had I, that was a video too where I was like, I want to watch this and I absolutely can't watch this. I it's, think a lot of kids of that generation. Yeah, that yeah. is gateway horror. Definitely. To the fullest. Like that and the, and the Garfield Halloween special. Oh, that's, I love the Garfield Gosh. Halloween special. It's that's one of the awful. greatest TV specials. Yeah, it's so scary. It. But please Hands continue, down continue, yeah. continue. Well, so, but then I got into uh, horror when I was a little older as it was Friday the 13th, part four. That yes. made me say, OK, if Corey Feldman from the Goonies can handle Jason, <laughs> I can handle Jason because I love the Goonies. And it's just so, and I watched it. And I loved it. But before that, Exorcist uh, gave me a whole summer of nightmares. Sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know. Kids, how old were you when you watched The Exorcist for the first time? I was I think it was third grade going into fourth grade. The first summer that me and like a mixed group of kids like uh you know girls and boys were together and i remember this girl i had a crush on was like let's watch the exorcist and i was like Every okay <laughs> yeah bad idea i think that there bad. is th that is like um as we've done this checking in with series and we've talked to people especially in the horror genre that is such a universal story of being too young to see something yes. scary yeah. and oh. having it imprint itself in a way where it for some reason didn't push you away mm -hmm. it it terrified you and traumatized you and yet intrigued you and i'm still trying to figure out and maybe you have a line on this of what it is about horror that brings us back even though it scared 
us so much. Um, For me, what brought me back was the lighter version of horror, which was the Friday the 13th, the Freddy Kruegers, the, even though they still have scary things in them. They had like an accessible thing in them, which were either the teenagers or the parents or something. In The Exorcist, there was nothing accessible to me no. that made me feel like it was a good thing because, I, A, I was raised Catholic, so demons to me were real. When yeah. you tell a little boy or uh, anybody who's like a little kid who's a, a Catholic that demons exist, hell exists, and here's this movie. Yeah. 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 You shit your pants for uh, yeah, exactly. two, three months. You can't sleep. Exactly. Well, it's a good point, too, because in The Exorcist, the only person you can identify with is the person who's being possessed. Right, so you like right. you yeah. lose yeah. your surrogate. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't have a friend for the yeah. rest of the movie. There's yep. nothing to hang on to, especially for a kid in that movie. It's yeah. all betrayal. By yeah. William <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It's all betrayal. The Devastating. whole thing. The, whole the crazy thing. thing is going back now. You know, I've seen the movie so many times. We watched it recently. And we're watching it, and I'm like, the craftsmanship in this movie oh, yeah. is like beyond anything. It's someone. It's every, everything was firing on all cylinders. Yeah. The cinematography, the direction, the acting. It felt you like you were watching real people. Yeah, I kind of miss that the '70s acting where it was very natural and you couldn't really tell. Like they were, they had such a wonderful fa uh, uh, daughter mother relationship. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was like. I, you yeah. can't compare it to anything. It's like Poltergeist too, not to compare right, exactly. it to something, but no, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. that supernatural. Like that was a family, you know. Supernatural, yeah. you're about to say. It's a, it's a supernatural <laughs> acting style, but yeah, Coach and his, you know, and 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 his kids. Coach, yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. So Nelson. you feel like that's very real family, and I think that again yeah. makes it so much yeah. scarier. And, and touching, does. touching, t touching on the Exorcist a bit. <laughs> So we all have that moment where we're like, okay, we have the exorcist, we have the nightmare on Elm streets. You have those moments. What was your moment where like, my moment was my friend, my metalhead friend, metalhead Mike, he came up to me and he was like, oh, you like the exorcist? You ever see beyond the door? And I was like, what? <laughs> and, oh. then we fucked, and then we watched, and then we, he got me into crazy Italian movies. So like, when was that moment for you when you were like, wait, the, the crazy Italian stuff is where it's at. Oh, the Italian stuff was in college because okay. yeah. I went to film school and my okay. film school was uh, it wasn't great as far as the practical knowledge as, of learning movies uh, to make them. There was a little bit. OK, it was fine. But the thing that was really great is I had this guy, David Sterrett, who was a critic who showed us movies. And I took all of his classes. I took an Altman class. I took a Kubrick class. I took a Cassavetes class. He was great. And in through speaking to him and through talking to the other students, that's when Jalo started to open up to me. And so my film school, just watching films was incredible for uh, increasing my uh, knowledge of movies in general. But the thing that opened me up to actual horror to like love it as a genre and later on I got to work for the company was Troma. Yeah. yeah. It was a late night viewing of Class of Newcomb High Part 2, so humanoid yeah. meltdown. Yeah. <laughs> And I was like 10 years old, too young to obviously be watching these titties uh -huh. and the things in the butt. But, <laughs> totally. but it's it's a living Looney Tunes cartoon where it there's some gross stuff. There's stop motion. There's nudity. There's gore. There's everything. And then there's a mutated squirrel that grows up like Godzilla. <laughs> it, it blew my mind. I said, if this is what horror could be, then sign me up for more. So I started getting more exploratory. And there's something too, I think, when you're a kid, that there's just this inherent understanding that grownups made this, and the grownups <laughs> yeah. I know mm -hmm. yeah. seem fairly normal and maybe a little stodgy. But there's some grownups like in New York who seem to be doing a different kind of being grown up, yes. and it, it intrigues you. I'm assuming oh, yeah. living so close to actually this city with which oh, you yeah. two did, yeah. that must have been, I mean, toxic in the best way toxic. Just, I need to go in. Yeah. yeah toxic. <laughs> One might say a toxic Avenger. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, yeah it was incredible. We were lucky that we yeah. had that uncle Lloyd was a, a train right away. Yeah. And Local. you ended up working with trauma. Yeah. That was, uh, that was something that was so wild to me because, um, I had an opportunity before I moved to LA, somebody gave me a business card and said, this is my, um, cousin's boyfriend. Give him a call name was Doug Sackman. And this was in like 99 or 2000. And I didn't do it because I moved to LA. I decided to go. So I wasn't going to hit up trauma. But when I came back 
and I got involved with Troma through Twitter. I just like answered one of Uncle Lloyd's tweets. Oh, we're looking for <laughs> editing volunteers. I said, I edit. Yeah. And I got the, the volunteer position. One of the first people I met was Doug Sackman. So it was weird that I was supposed to at some point yeah. meet him and work with him and sim similarly with uh, Lloyd and Troma. And Bethany, you have a quote from John. Yeah, you so that's, a, that's incredible. There's um there's I think a conversation that is worth having, especially for creatives, about working for free. Yes. And I think that you make a really good point. If I may read your own quote back. Oh to my you. god, this is okay. amazing. <laughs> um so on working for free, you said sometimes giving yourself away for free when you're first starting out is good. Give yourself away for free because that brings you to the attention of people higher up who will use you and they will use you at first, <laughs> but then they'll see you're a hard worker, bring you into the fold and start to pay you. If you're being exploited, don't do it. But if you're getting something out of it, like contacts, networking and experience, then sometimes it's absolutely worth it to give yourself away for free. And I think that that is the best summation of the argument that I've heard because there are so many artists who um, are being asked by these giant corporations to voluntarily give their art away for mm -hmm. like exposure on these massive projects where they yeah. could absolutely get paid. And I like that you bring up the point of exploitation where if that's the case, don't do it. But in your case, you volunteered to edit and it ended up forming this years long relationship where I'm guessing you also just learned so much with the trauma family. Yeah, it was the real practical film school that I didn't necessarily get in college. It was the hands on like we got to make this for 50 bucks or, we're, or it's never coming out sort of mm. uh, mentality. And it just was amazing to learn how to use the, the equipment. I never knew how to read a contract. I mean, not only was Michael uh, uh, Lloyd Kaufman great for me michael hers the the co-founder of trauma he was there he taught me what indemnification meant and just things that i never <laughs> knew what a contract was so right. if you can find people who it leads to eventually a beneficial thing for you like i said contacts things like that then it's fine but if you're in a place say uh universal studios and they're putting your song in a movie and you get zero residuals they say that you can't uh ca collect anything from ascap or something like that that's exploitation you can't totally. that's that's you just have to know the difference between okay if i work for free on a trauma set that leads me to which to me meant that i met the guys who eventually went on to do the last drive-in so it was so beneficial to me and yeah. right. um, i think if right. you could Figure out the two where you're being used or you're being exploited or you're benefiting. Yeah. You have to like figure that out. Yeah. So. And I think that's the important distinction. Such yeah. an it important distinction. It has to be beneficial yeah. to you too. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just absolutely being screwed. Because 100%. sometimes, what else are you going to do? Like, you can put things together alone, but a lot of times when you're learning alone and you don't have somebody who's either better than you or more knowledgeable than you, you're gonna make mistakes that that person who's better or more knowledgeable, say like Lloyd Kaufman can say, no, don't do it that way, do it this way. Cause I know I've done this for 40, 50 years. Bingo. You know, so Bingo. it's yep. helpful. Now, touching on that, speaking of learning by yourself, you are from my school of learn by necessity, do it, do it all yourself. So it's like, okay, we shoot it, we score it, we you know, we edit it, we do everything. Uh, we were talking the thank you for we you watched Lonely Hearts before this. Yes. Thank you great. so much. Uh, and I'll say it on Mike, great great twist thank not you. to spoil anything but <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of shorts that don't go anywhere and this one absolutely went somewhere and I was like, wow, that's really cool. So you thank guys you. did a great thank job. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much. That was our first foray into, you know, horror and and it was a soft launch we were like we're not going to go for gore we're just going to do like a story you know but and it not works really, like... it works in the horror realm as well as the comedy world that's what's thank great you. about that short yeah thank, thank you. you that means that means so much we that really means a are lot proud of that but movie. i i basically i mean we had help mm -hmm. but i did everything i scored it i you know i did, did everything you lit it and yep. i lit it I, you know camera work everything so Let's talk about your journey into like doing it all yourself and then learning, yeah. hey, it's it's good to have a team because we're about to embark on a project, hopefully this year, where I'll have more hands. It's like for a company. So it's like, you know, there's a lot more hands in the pot. It's it's a very collaborative effort. I'm not, I'm still gonna have to do a lot of stuff by myself. And I'm glad I have that knowledge. You've trained for this your whole right. life. I've like trained for this. <laughs> 
I basically yeah. said, I've trained for that budget my yep. whole life. <laughs> Because we were so able to great. cut yep. things and put it more to the special effects. And I said, I'll handle all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But what was your journey into like, all right, you know, I'm going to do music, but I'm also going to do film and I'm going to put all this stuff together and like teaching yourself everything. Yeah. Well, so for me, movies were first. I always wanted to make movies when I, there's a, a video of me as a four year old kid and my parents rented a, one of those old clunky VHS cameras. Yeah. And the Probably first the thing size I say is, of you. Yes, I was like huge. And I said, uh, <laughs> let's make a movie like, you know, and, but <laughs> well, I came out dressed in like karate. Yeah, I had like karate pajamas. I wanted to make a karate movie. So that was always in me to make movies. The music was also in me, but in a way that was more just on, that just naturally came out of me because I would sing songs and these kids would be like, you're always singing. What are you singing? Like, well, making up these songs at baseball practice. Uh, <laughs> it just was something that I did. So when I um, got into college and I went into film school, I had also just for fun started to do musical stand up because I had written some stupid songs. The first song I ever wrote was Barbecue Maniac. <laughs> well, no, sorry. The first official song I ever wrote in kindergarten was Jamie poops all day long. She never stops pooping. <laughs> Do you remember turns, the chorus? Turns out she has like colitis. Jamie poops what is all day long. She <laughs> never stops pooping. Yes. Me and, me and my friend Frankie wrote it because we both had a crush on this girl. Her name was Jamie. And, and what's then the of best course way? you write a song yeah. about her pooping because you have a crush on her. Well, hey, in kindergarten, anything goes. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course, of course. The language of love is very complicated. Yeah. In kindergarten. And I wonder, you know, is Jamie still out there and is she still pooping all day long? Huh? <laughs> Jamie, if you're out there, hit me up. We'll we'll have lunch. Uh, <laughs> no conversation. But uh, so Barbecue Maniac, I wrote in um in high school as a joke because there was that video, ain't nothing but a G thing from uh, -huh. uh you know Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre, and there's the one part where they're at the beach playing volleyball and it zooms in on this guy at the barbecue and he turns around and he has a gun in his waistband. And I said, who's that motherfucker? What's his story? <laughs> I want to know about it. <laughs> so I brought, I made up this whole thing. His name was Walker Jones. He was the best <laughs> nice. at barbecue. You know, it was a whole thing. So um, after that, my friends really liked that song. So I started writing other songs about vagina and uh, drinking <laughs> and all this stuff. And so I started to do musical stand up while I was in college just for fun, because my friend had a night where he was the bartender and he said, I could do anything I want here. So I want you to do an hour of music and then I'll bring in a couple of other people. Amazing. And, uh, yeah, we just did that for like a whole summer. That's incredible. And then that sort of like, you know, got my juices flowing as far as like I like to do music for me as a therapy, but the movies are like my career. Sure. Right. So throughout the years, I started to take um my video can i had an xl1 i think it was it was a canon and mm -hmm. i would record myself you know doing guitar parts vocals and then i would layer it in final cut and learn to mix that way which just like came naturally it was weird and i would then put it out on a wave file and give it to my friends and stuff so that's so wait that's crazy more... so you so i'm sorry to interrupt but you no, no, yeah. film yourself and instead of doing like a daw like a like a digital audio workstation like a pro tools or whatever you would edit the audio from the camcorder or the yeah. or the camera yeah i would disregard the video just <laughs> you disregard the audio that's amazing that's awesome. and that's then crazy. i would layer it and then i would you know they had like reverbs in there they had all yeah. sorts of stuff in final cut seven or maybe it was one before that yeah yeah and just for fun i, I would start to mix stuff oh, and then awesome. uh through that just people liked it like i would give it out to my friends or give it out to uh, people who i met and uh just be like hey this is one of the stupid things i do and then i wrote a musical which we had a reading for and everything. Yes, please. What's Wait, it called? what was it called? Yeah, we got to get the title. It was called The Jingle Man. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and it was about a guy who wrote jingles and uh, yeah. you know, uh, whatever, all this sort of stuff. And then uh, now it's called Jingleheimer. Great. <laughs> yeah. Great. Is there, nice. is there a bomb in it? Is there a bomb in it? Oh, that's a good idea, actually. I, I didn't think about that. <laughs> Jing Jingleheimer, because it's John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. Gotcha. Right, yeah. 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 But J Jingleheimer is a good idea with a bomb. Uh -huh. Yeah, totally. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, I'll give you co writing credit if well, I. Uh... You know what? You can just give me a special thanks. I'm happy. There you go. Yeah. There you I'm go. Happy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But so, so the thing that then launched me into music as like more of a focus for me for a few years was uh, Matt Mangerides at Troma, who went on to do The Last Drive In. They needed in in Return to Newcomb High Volume Two, 
They needed a knockoff of Goodbye Horses because Lloyd has a scene where he tucks his penis like Buffalo Bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, and of course they can't afford Goodbye Horses. No. So right. I, I did a knockoff and it worked because uh, we were playing it on set and Lloyd's wife came in and not only was she upset that he was tucking his penis, but she's like, <laughs> and she's like, and by the way, we can't use this song because we can't afford it. And, and and Lloyd's like, no, John Brennan wrote this song. It's a, it, it's, a, it's, <laughs> it's, so it's not the original. She's like, oh wow, it's really good. And That's then that got brace. her to. She started directing the scene. <laughs> Amazing. So, Amazing. Yeah, it won her over. That's so. incredible. And I, I I can't stress enough to everyone listening that trauma is responsible for so many great filmmakers now yep. and really started it's its own film school uh, i yes. listened to the film threat podcast chris gore worked for trauma as well oh, who runs really? film threat yeah and oh. he talks about how he learned so much than he would ever have learned in film school from lloyd because he 100. does it he does it all you yep. know and uh who's the guy that just took over dc the director james gunn James Gunn is from the School yeah. of Trauma. Joe Lynch. Uh, Joe he Lynch. worked at Trauma. Joe Lynch. That's right. Yeah. Now, uh, who has that'll... beef with Joe Bob? <laughs> yeah, it's it's we, fun. It's we, fun. Watched, <laughs> we watched the beef li happen live, and we were like, oh, this is great. I love I love one beef. I love many beefs. Yeah. But, beefs. but yeah, but there, my, my point is, there's so many people. <laughs> many beefs. There's a new track, many beefs. Beefs. Um, there's there's that it's such a film school in itself yeah. and the crazy yeah. part is if you email trauma they'll be like yeah we got a job for you come down at this day this time yeah. and you're like wait i'm hired they're like yeah you're not gonna get paid but just come and do this thing Calm and, and learn will, yeah anybody in the tri-state area i highly recommend who's mm -hmm. like trying to get into the business go and work at trauma a day or two a week see what it's like meet lloyd get involved in the events just do it because you'll just doing those events you meet like 100 200 people who are trying to do the same thing that yes. you're doing yeah and then you might do something together yeah so. and and uncle lloyd is also just a, a lover of film he was the person yes. he bought he bought and distributed death by temptation you know like Absolutely. no we would not we would not have that movie or it wouldn't have gotten at least a, a release without him so it's like he has such great taste you know so when yeah. you think of trauma you're like oh those crazy movies where people are just throwing up on each other you're like no they're art number one <laughs> yeah. and number yeah. two yeah. like he knows way more about film and filmmaking and has such great taste and really champions like unknown filmmakers to yeah. do their best yeah. and you learn you you get you work you're able to work fast too which yeah. is the best part of like doing it all yourself is you yeah. gotta know how to work fast and sometimes without permits yeah totally oh. yeah sometimes mildly illegal yeah. and it, yeah. it there you know trauma is still truly independent like mm -hmm. they are what's the longest running independent well, film yeah the longest running independent studio in the world i believe is what they say and i believe it because this is the 50th anniversary it's 2024 they started in 1974. yeah it's amazing yeah it's so, amazing yeah. yeah and there was just this big uh rally they finally got reinstated on youtube good thank god yeah, that was oh crazy. that was terrible I mean, wasn't that ridiculous yeah I like, I, I, what? come on it's yeah. also a good reminder to back up all your files, but like there were so, <laughs> so, so much, yeah, yeah, so much content disappeared that people had only uploaded to the Troma YouTube page and it was just gone. Mm -hmm. And yes. uh, thank God they got that reinstated. Because yeah, that was, that was sad because uh, I had a lot of stuff up there that uh, got taken down, but luckily they've been slowly putting it back up. And I, like you said, that's like the only place that you could really find it. So nice, Lloyd, nice enough to say, oh, you can upload this uh, to your stuff just in case we get knocked down again. Yeah. Which so nice. I have it in a, in, a, in a safe place as well. So, dude, the Internet, she's scary. She's yeah. scary. Get your stuff on a cassette or something because you can hold on to it. Like, physical media. Physical media. Physical media. <laughs> yeah. I, I uploaded a song two Christmases ago called Merry Christmas, Have a Beer. <laughs> and I put it on Facebook and they blocked me every single time. Even I said, Why? this is my song. I recorded this in my basement. This is no one else's song. I'm sorry. And they would not listen. They would not. They, they just blocked it. Copyright. It's ridiculous. From who? Physical media. <laughs> <laughs> Look behind me. Physical exactly. Media. Yeah, I was just going to totally. say all the, the those are all tapes and Blu-rays and DVDs and everything. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and the, this is it's... just part of it because I I started collecting because when i moved from la to new york stupidly i'm like oh, i don't need these vhs anymore i don't watch them this and, that. and it was before i got into the whole you know horror scene yeah. right 
then when I started seeing it, how passionate people were with collecting and how much I missed the olden days of the VHS stores and stuff, I said, I got to start my collection again. So I slowly over the years rebuilt. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was a stupid yeah. Stupid mistake. Well, no, but none of us knew. Like, yeah, yeah. I rem the first time I really learned that our movies weren't entirely safe unless we owned them was when Star Wars got re-edited to put oh. in all of like the old Don't get Darth Vader's and stuff, right? And oh, so I, I had, them. I was so mad. I had the the three pack of the first three of the. Like, I have it six. right here. Uh, the un like the unadulterated yep. ones, right? Yeah, yes. these, these, yeah. Yep. Because like a year after I bought those, they went back and re-edited them and changed the music mm -hmm. and changed some of the scenes. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like, wait, that's a lot. I thought that was illegal. Like in my little kid brain, I was like, that's not legal. You can't do that. And of course they can. <laughs> Keep this conversation <laughs> going. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. So, so yeah. So there is like, I think talking about growing up and like learning different lessons and discovering parts of yourself i think the real the moment that i realized that the art you love isn't necessarily safe anymore unless you own it uh yeah. really hit me that that i threw my mac and cheese i was watching the return of the jedi <laughs> and when hayden christensen came on screen yeah. at the end which i think some people disparage him i think he's good in the prequels i think it works but i think he was beaten down way too much who's that yeah uh, George Christensen. Christensen. oh he was great yeah, yeah I, I i find him fine but in return of the jedi a it doesn't make sense why it would be him yeah. b I, it just they took away yub nub uh, yeah, I, know. I know i know that was the other why thing why would you take away yub nub and why would you change the cantina like the not the cantina song the job of the hut's power yeah, yep. so why would you do that yep so I couldn't, there, lucas is stupid sometimes so, i was so mad because i always loved that song i because it was yeah. such a victorious song yeah. and i was like wait what what's going on this isn't the song i know i was devastated yeah, this same this was a pandemic purchase <laughs> hell yeah so this was during the pandemic for those of you who are just listening, it is the widescreen collector's edition of the Star Wars trilogy, the definitive collection. On Laserdisc. I don't even have a Laserdisc player. Wow. This is the only, this is like the last version. So my dream is to digitize this and like remaster it and yes. be like, now I have the original ones that I saw that I love that don't have like CGI in them. Yeah. You yeah. Know, the thing is like, I understand wanting to redo something as a director like i'm like okay yeah if technology improves and it wasn't it didn't look as good but like at least spielberg he did that with et he put out the original too he was like well here's the original when they were holding guns and not flashlights yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you know yeah. he's like i'm sorry I, I just wanted to do what i wanted to do but here's here's the re version you love yeah yeah no. Don't lie to us and tell us it's lost. It, it's like, lost. Don't tell us it's gone. Don't tell us yeah. the masters are gone. You know that they exist. It's like, dude, come on. But this, I also have to commend Lucas for not suing fans for yes, like doing course. fans. Like he's very good. Oh with yeah. Fans. Like he doesn't. Well, now it's now it's Disney. That's Disney. Owned, so. So, <laughs> so God um, knows what's gonna happen. But that does lead me to um, something of yours that I think is lost. Well, I can't believe all this this printouts for me. This is amazing. Thank you oh, so yeah. much. <laughs> Bethany did. Bethany does all the research for these wow, uh, shows. Thank you. This is my thing. Okay. You are taking your time to come and talk with us. The least we can do is dig into your past. Oh, no. So, <laughs> <laughs> Don't make it a this is your life because there's a few been, people I don't want to talk to. I've been standing outside your house for a week. <laughs> um, no, so you... You made a short film called My Dream of Three Way. Oh my God, yes. And you, it's not, we can't see it, right? Because you put okay. a print song in it. Yes. So, oh, wow. Tell us wow. about this. Now, you, that's the most research anybody's ever done on me. So, <laughs> in film school, um, I was in the thick of the turnover from film to DV. Mm -hmm. And when I started in ninth grade, uh, ninth grade, and when I started as a freshman, in college, nobody was talking about DV. By the time I got to senior year, all it was was about is the future of filmmaking is DV. So mm -hmm. I bought a camera because I because while I was going to uh, uh, film school, I was also a full time janitor, so I was able to afford it. Hell so yeah. I got this DV thing and I concocted a movie called My Dream of Three Way. 
for my senior thesis, which I wanted to shoot like a porno, yeah. but there was no sex in it. It was like the <laughs> the scenes in between the sex. Yes. <laughs> like it was the plot. Yeah. It was the, the plot, plot of a porn. Yeah. 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 And it's all about this guy who has this girl who he's in love with, but he's obsessed with uh, threesomes because he gets free Spice Channel and Playboy through like <laughs> stolen cable. Right. So his his mind is <laughs> fucked up because he's yeah. like w the li life is like a porno. So why can't I get my girlfriend that I love to fuck another woman in front of me? And, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> the age old and question. It, it kind of is. Yeah. But then <laughs> 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 then he uh, it, it just backfires. Everything goes wrong for him. The, the you know, his girlfriend uh, does this, that and the other thing. So anyway, in it, I didn't score it. I used mostly popular songs. Yeah. And it went well into a few film festivals, but when I put it on YouTube, immediately Prince's people yeah. Yeah. zapped it for um, yeah. I Want to Be Your Lover. Uh -huh. He doesn't mess around. He didn't mess yeah. around. Yeah. So the sad thing is I still have the master DV tape. I just haven't digitized um, digitized it again in order to, because I lost the hard drive that I had the original file on. Ugh. But I, I want to go back and re-edit it with a score. Like, I'll score it this time. Totally. Don't, Lucas, your film, Don't. buddy. No, no, Keep no. It'll the be shot for, way. shot for shot. Shot for shot. But just, I can't use Huey Lewis's if this is right. it. You no, know? exactly. Yeah, if you rescored it, because you could do yeah. it, because yeah. you, Uncle Lloyd asked you to do the same thing, and you were great yeah. at it, so you could totally do I that. I would love I want to hear know. your version of totally. I want to be a lover. Oh, totally. I want to be the your John lover. Bre yeah, I want to hear the yeah. John Brennan falsetto. Yeah. Yeah. But I would be curious if you did the math and like figured out how much it would actually cost you if you put that movie out today with all of the musical rights yeah. and how much it would cost oh, like yeah, how many God. millions of dollars this movie would It'd potentially cost you yeah there was, absolutely insane there was 20 songs i mean never <laughs> oh my, my love yeah. Uh, yeah you know the james brown songs it was just too much it would be a, a million plus at yeah. least yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that's technically lost media. So that I is. look yeah, forward. That's a, that, yeah, it's a lost media. So when it I comes might, out, I might know. throw it up on Venmo if I could digitize that tape. Just put oh, it on yeah. Venmo and not tell anybody, and then secretly share the oh, link. Send yeah. it to us, please. Yeah. All right. All right. Don't, it's we pretty won't good. Tell anyone. Maybe I'll edit it down just slightly, like no, Lucas. No, don't do it. All right. All right. All right, all right. Always, <laughs> always give the fans the original. Or as, yeah, you're right. If you're gonna do it, put Hayden Christensen in the corner. <laughs> Yes, Hazy. I'll just have him float by and be like, oh, I'm the pimp now. You yeah, know. exactly. <laughs> but what's great about that movie and what you said is that it's about how you shouldn't lose yourself in fantasy because it isn't real or what you wished for. Mm. And I think that yes. that's actually very relevant now that pornography is so like available. You know, yeah. you just it's a click away. Yeah. So I, I like that you were like, no, there's an actual message to this. Like, don't get lost in the fantasy. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why I got mad because um my teachers at that time they were just like you're making a porno and i'm like no i'm making a point like mm -hmm. it is the porno because it's this that was the time of american pie and all this sort of mm -hmm. stuff right 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 um and it was also the time of a lot of porn but they would come after <laughs> me for making sex jokes and meanwhile there's people who are putting out tarantino worship where people are killing themselves hit men who mm -hmm. are burying their girlfriends and shit and i'm like so it's yep. acceptable for these guys in my class to be killing people on screen totally. but i have a couple of sex jokes and maybe a little you know lesbian makeout session oh, and yeah. that's bad what it's, the fuck you learned young our country is based on very strict puritan rules yeah it's we, so weird we man. love violence, I had a we script. hate sex i, I just want to fucking knock my film school one more time <laughs> i had a script <laughs> <laughs> that got it got voted by everybody in my class. So all the kids, we made four scripts that year, and my script got voted. It was called Professional Ass for Rent. <laughs> <laughs> and it got so bad to a point that my teacher <laughs> made me rewrite it from uh November to April. Yeah. And the final time that I got the script back, he went through the character's name was professional ass for rent he went through and he circled the name ass every time and i flipped out i was like you are harassing me the fuck <laughs> and <laughs> half the kids were on my side and half yeah. the kids were like you can't talk to a teacher that way right. like, look what he did he circled the word ass what the fuck is this we're like mm -hmm. you know we're not kids anymore this well, is also that's that says something weird about him that he's at home yeah. circling the word ass over and over and over. Imagine, and, over. and that's and that's yeah, just the fuck with me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was just yeah, that was, that was just yeah, that was just the fuck, fuck with me. you, yeah. motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. I, I won't say his name, but one day I'll see him. One day, one day, and that man was Hayden Christensen. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, so let's talk a little bit about the last drive-in with Joe Bob. Mm -hmm. uh, All right. So you. 
you have been with it from the beginning of its shutter incarnation which was 2018 yeah yeah so yeah we yeah we we uh we didn't know what we were gonna do because our budget got cut for the development uh they it right, was like yeah. a real budget and then it got cut down by the new regime at shutter down to like i don't even know thirty thousand or something crazy like Oof. that yeah Oof. so so but luckily and I, I attribute it to this. I don't know if they do, but they come from the trauma system, two mm -hmm. of the uh, producers. So they said, let's just make it with what we have. And they there did. You go. And yeah. it's I think that's part of the magic because it is so charmingly low budget in mm -hmm. that it's clearly shot on a stage. You know, it is yeah. it is not trying to be anything that it isn't. And I think it's it's so I don't know. It's so it's so um there, there feels like there isn't a barrier to entry. You know, right. it feels like yeah. anyone yeah. is welcome. If you're yep. into film, if you're yep. into horror, yep. um, you just come on in and you just learn an encyclopedic knowledge base of of horror movies. Yeah, and yeah. again, there's 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 the community. Yeah, you know, I mean, oh, like, yeah. it's it's amazing to watch a show and then realize that there's the mutant fam and that that is all cultivated by all of you. Yeah, you know, meaning yeah. like you, Joe, Bob. Diana, everybody, everybody on the show is like, they're our family, mm -hmm. you know? Well, we, I, I mean, especially me, for sure, I could speak for myself. If I wasn't on the show, I would be watching and part yeah. of the mutant fam. I would be tweeting along and be, because it's right up my alley. It's the exact thing I love. And just not knowing what they're going to show is also like a really cool thing. So I, I kind of wish that I was in the audience for that because sometimes I know in advance, but yeah. <laughs> right. When do you, how much in advance do you find out? Like, do you guys get the, the whole season slate or when do you find out? It, we do. Well, okay. For the kayfabe purposes, uh, it's all live. It's all live. Of course. Yeah. Yes, of course. It's, it's all live. It's, it, it, Joe Bob doesn't write anything. He just off the top of his head. It's, yep. uh, you know, his name isn't John Bloom. It's Joe Bob Briggs. And that's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but for, for practical, <laughs> now that I got that out of the way, for practical yeah. purposes, we shoot in chunks. So we do a few episodes here, a few episodes there. And um, sometimes they're mixed up in the way we shoot them. And sometimes they're, you know, in order. It depends on how. I don't know. Sometimes the rights issues, things like that, uh, yeah. kind of sides sideswipe certain things sometimes. Yeah, yeah. It is though an education because you could watch the the show and you know you really understand that there are films out there that you haven't seen that are brilliant and that are not in oh. the genre that you may think they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and that's what I love about Joe Bob is he's like people call this trash, but it's amazing. Mm -hmm. We yeah. part, we part ways at Halloween three, obviously, <laughs> but but I love Halloween three, so I'm not on that. Halloween three is the best. Bless. So yeah, it's yeah. Awesome. may I share you? May I share with you my story with Halloween three? Please, yeah. Do you? Okay, so you grew up probably. I think I think you guys we're are roughly sort the same of age. roughly the same yeah. age. Remember when you couldn't choose what yet what you could watch? You just it was just on. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, so like yeah. I'm watching TV one day, and I'm a little kid, so I didn't watch any of the Halloweens and this movie comes on Halloween three and it was the first movie in the in the series that I saw so I'm like yo this movie's great this town's weird town the masks like Bugs. everything and so here I am thinking great the rest of the series must be like this so then my friend mm. I go over his house in my teens and I'm like dude dude Halloween can we watch the first one I've never I've only seen the third one he's like the third one sucks I'm like what, what are you crazy it's oh. amazing the witch the good the guy the, the 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 Stonehenge everything I'm like it's so metal he's like no no Michael Myers I'm like who the fuck is Michael Myers <laughs> <laughs> so like that was my education and I love that movie it does it's my comfort movie it's like every time I watch it it just gives me that like feeling of i don't know it makes me feel good inside yeah. you know yeah. like tom atkins america's teddy bear it's a great movie yeah isolation small mm -hmm. weird town stone fucking stonehenge stonehenge is in anyway, it man. So absolutely that, the so atmosphere the halloween yeah. it feels yeah. like halloween yes yeah. out of all the movies that's the one that feels the most to me like halloween yeah. Yeah. yeah um was there any movie like that that you have that everyone is like that movie sucks and you're like nope it's the best <laughs> oh good question off the top of my head what movie do oh uh, well okay uh, i'll put it this way it's more of a genre and it's shot on video, nice. sort of like, you know, literally shot on VHS or camcorder. So movies like Splatter Farm. Uh -huh. I was a big fan of the episode that we showed where we showed things and Sledgehammer. 
Dude, things is so I love it. Fucking I love crazy. It. I love it. It's I, I, so <laughs> crazy. It's yeah. like they literally shot it on a home move, like a, a video camera. Like yeah. there, and that's a whole genre in itself. Yeah. Is I, the, I, the, the I, VHS I, stuff? I want to shoot movies like that. Wes. I'm, I'm yes. building up towards this sort of stuff. The first two or three movies I make are going to be on camcorder. Hell, I mean, yeah. it's yes. just it, because that aesthetic to me is so pleasing because that's uh -huh. how I grew up sort of experimenting with my friends on making skits and stupid things on high yes. eight camera. Yep. So it's almost like- You mean like your youth group uh, sk uh, skits. skits? Yeah, the skits. <laughs> Because we were like, oh, we're schizophrenic. Schizophrenic? Uh -huh. <laughs> Lunatic boy and schizophrenic man yes! solving crimes oh in God, an I, asylum. I can't believe you know that. That's it's been outside your house, John, for she's a been, week. Wow. She's been like, it's like, uh, it's like, what is it? The information. She's yeah. just sitting there with that one of those weird like That's satellite dish so things just cool. recording you. No, but there is there is also something about with VHS editing in camera, too. Mm -hmm. Like there yes. is a, a f just the 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 click over to the next scene is different somehow. It yep. feels different and yep. it is, uh, it's more, it feels so organic. And I think anybody from our ish generation, whoever did anything in VHS and like, like spliced in camera, it's such a learning experience. Yes. And I love that you're going to bring that back. Did you do yeah, that I'm with try. skits? Did you do that with skits? Did you like edit in camera? Like, okay, we in got camera. that shot. Yeah. Now let's, yeah. It, That's it. it. It was only because we didn't at that time have any sort of idea that you could edit this stuff. It was always right. like, all right, so what's the next shot? All right, we're doing it. set it up, do it. And it's like, okay, wait, uh, you stay there. And then we're going to bring <laughs> this thing in. And, you know, so we had to like do it as we went. And some of it's even funnier because it was yep. all edited in camera. You <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah. Yep. And it's literally jump cuts, you know, like False you're like, takes are yeah, still yeah. in there. They yes. pop in yep. for a second. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. I remember when my parents got this camera. They got this little like VHSC camera, and it had a fade, a fade in, fade out yeah. button. I was like, Ooh. "Holy wow. shit!" And then you could do credits. <laughs> I was like, "Oh my god!" My yep. friends and I are making dumb credits and like fade yeah. ins and fade outs. But it was like that's how you learned. You're like, "Whoa, this is so cool!" And we literally would edit in camera. I'm like, "I'm gonna do a sick fade in here," <laughs> and like we'd fade to white. It wasn't even a black. It was just white, and, you know. Oh, but was, or that like pixelated fade out i yeah, used to no, love that yeah. one. it was the best but that was it, it's it's weird because i carried that over and i don't know you probably carried this over too is that even in music i'm like i don't want to do too many takes like i'm like i want yeah. the freshest take and i want like for, for lonely hearts we did like two three takes and that's why I was like, I just, that was great. Like, yeah. I, let's just leave that. Like, that was good. I don't want to, I don't want to do any more. Unless you're like getting the sillies out, you usually take the first take, I you know? The first take's always the well, best. Yeah, because it's yeah. the least self-conscious. It's yeah. when you're just sort of doing it and you're not thinking too yeah. much. And yeah. and yeah, why do 11, 12, 13? But has that carried on now for you with like making music and, and making films? Yeah, I, I get uh, a little frustrated when I work with somebody who wants to always change always hammer it always oh maybe that's not the right way to go usually for me when i'm working the initial thing is the right way because then yeah. we could go through it yes. 84 times and come back and do it the same way we were going to do it the first time and say right. why don't we just waste all this yeah. time yeah mm -hmm. oh yep. it's mm -hmm. my totally. experience you know no it's you're true. you're right you're, yeah. you're absolutely right and yeah. like you know everything that we shot for lonely hearts was exactly what it was yeah that was it yeah. there was no like there was no like we oh let's let's do this for coverage it was like no let's just shoot this like this again, is what's in the head it's and... like it's the trauma headspace we don't have time and we don't have money you just do so, it so we're just gonna get what we need to get going ready yeah going totally. ready yeah. Yeah. i think uh, i just heard a story that matt damon said about clint eastwood and Clint Eastwood is notorious for only doing one or two takes when he directs. Yeah, and great. Matt Damon tried to test him and say, hey, can I do another uh, just for myself? And Clint Eastwood said, yeah, if you want to waste everybody's time. <laughs> <laughs> so even at that level, fucking Eastwood yeah. knows. You yeah. Know? Yeah. He knows yeah. stuff. Oh, he's amazing. He does. And uh, he, there was another story, too, where someone was like, I, I need to do another one. He was like, for you, right? For you. Yeah, yeah for ahead, you. Do it. Yeah. He's like, I'm still going to use the first one, but go ahead. Go do ahead. it for you. Yeah. It's like he doesn't give a shit. And, oh. But that's also the sign of confidence. It's like he knows what he wants and he's got it. And like, yeah, and he's earned it. the right yeah. to, to be yeah. at that point. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can I ask you a question? Yes. <laughs> um, You have a screenplay called Gross Ferratu. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. So. Can we talk about it? When's it coming so, out? When are you gonna make it? Okay, so when I, whenever I did that interview or yeah. the podcast that you, 
that was uh, going to happen around then. And then a lot of things happen, whatever, whatever. So right now um, I have uh, I wrote a treatment. I wrote an outline and I have a great writer named Jimmy Adamson on it doing the first draft. Uh, based on what me and Zach Amico came up with, Zach Amico is a podcaster and a comedian. Um, he, I want him to, obviously to play Ghost Fratu because this was something <laughs> yeah. that me and him would have zooms during the pandemic and just be like, all right, what would be funny in this? Because I wanted to try and get it out for the Nosferatu hundredth anniversary. Mm. Oh yeah, but you know our working lives sometimes take over. Totally, but it's not dead. It's it's literally awesome. to, dude. Me just wrote a great trauma movie called. Uh, Curse of the Were Deer, which is so fucking yes. funny. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, yeah. So funny. And so I said, Jimmy, uh, you want to take a stab at this draft? I have all these notes. I have all these jokes. Try and do and something. And he's he's on it. Yeah, amazing. What you yeah. have to do, John, you must coincide the release with the new Nosferatu release. Yes. And when like, is that coming out? Is that this year? It's supposed to be this year. So just film oh, it. Do it. Great. It could be your first yeah, one on VHS. Imagine like the boat, like on VHS. <laughs> <laughs> a little boat. We're gonna have models and garbage, and yeah, we'll oh, just make the dude. whole all the set design with garbage. It'll Are you gonna? Amazing. Do you want to film it in black and white, or do you want to do like? How I do, do but some people don't. So I said we're gonna have a segment in black and white because the beginning starts right. um in the end of World War II at the Battle of Berlin in like this underground uh, tunnel. Yeah, and I want to shoot all that stuff in black and white, and cool. then cut to the present day. Yeah. So we're, well, we've made a compromise there. That's great. Yeah. And now <laughs> going back to Joe, Bob, you did you watch him growing up? Did you watch Monster Vision? So I saw him when I was really young at a sleepover with my cousins. Yeah. And we were watching just uh, the movie channel. I'm like, who is this crazy cowboy in, in this <laughs> chair introducing these like crazy, you know, the beach titty movies that we're watching. <laughs> <laughs> and uh we had a great time. So every kind of time that we went and slept over, we watched Joe Bob Briggs eat the popcorn mm -hmm. or whatever. And then in uh, Monster Vision times, I watched um, the Friday the 13th marathon. I remember yes. specifically tuning into that. but like, yeah. oh, shit, yeah. he's doing a marathon of this. So and then I caught him throughout the years just here and there. Um, so when I got to work with him, I was so, so nervous because I, I love him and I thought yeah. he was genius, you know, and I used to actually read some of his articles. Yeah. Um, so it was a little intimidating when I first met him because I didn't speak to him at all. <laughs> and, um, we were doing this song live. Hey, C Travis Crabtree, nobody sees the flowers, but me. <laughs> and I'd learned it from the movie or whatever. And I just was introduced by Austin who's yeah. our director. And he's like, oh, this is John Brennan. He learned the song. Hey, Travis Crabtree, here you go. And then Joe was like, okay, you want to practice? Yeah, let's practice. Practice the song. And uh, he turns to me afterwards. He goes, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm John. I work at Troma. I, I love your work. I learned this song. And I did the theme song. So, yeah. you know. Yeah. The theme song is great. I sing the theme song to myself sometimes. All the time. Just like. All when I'm moseying time. down the hallway. Yeah. Wow. And it's then, so much. And, then yeah. and then and then the classic Hogzilla. Now that, that the chant, the Hogzilla yeah. chant. Did that um, originate? Can you take credit for that? Like no, no, no I, Joe Let's Bob, talk about the origins of Hogzilla. That's all Joe Bob. He said, uh, I want you and Yuki off to the side at the red carpet premiere right outside the trailer. And I want every time that I say Hogzilla, I want you guys to chant Hogzilla. Hog Hogzilla. <laughs> and it just caught on like wildfire. The fans love it. It's amazing. So it became yeah. my bit, and I I will be the Hogzilla guy until the day I die. I'll take yeah. a bit like that. It it's never gets old. It's in your because bios. It's and then, in my bio. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and and you just brought up literally the 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 what is it the the mustard to your ketchup oh yeah the oh, mayonnaise yuki. to your yes oh, yuki. yuki sweet yuki who's worked for joe bob for a really long time right like he's been since with him the for marathon he, he was the production yeah. designer on the first marathon and onward yeah but you two have grown to be like best buds oh, co-workers best. beyond co-workers you do you yeah. have a side podcast yep. yeah um, thank as you well for as a mentioning it booming yeah. patreon <laughs> so like but that but that is like in itself such an amazing wonderful creation yeah talk to me about yuki and how you two just sort of became this odd couple of creators together yeah so yuki uh I will take credit for discovering Yuki. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> he was discovered before that with the Hallmark channel and all this sort of stuff. But in our world, yeah. he came in. I was producing at the time, hashtag Shakespeare shitstorm for Lloyd yep. Kaufman. Hell yeah. With Justin Martell, who mm -hmm. uh, went on to do The Last Drive-In. So at the same time we were doing 
the pre-production for Shakespeare Shitstorm, we were doing the pre-production for the last drive-in. And I put out an ad in Craigslist and said, looking for people who can build stages uh, for sets or whatever. And Yuki was one of the people who came in. He came in on a stormy February day uh, to the Troma office, soaking wet, broken umbrella, just like, I can't <laughs> see, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, you can get it out of the light. hired. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he came with a portfolio thick, thicker than my oh. head. I mean, and I got a thick head. So... <laughs> And he, he did, one of the first things he said is, I built a spaceship. I said, what? So he showed me his book and he built a spaceship based on the Christopher Nolan Inception hallway that spins wow. and it looks like the oh. perspective or whatever. And I'm like, yeah. oh my God, this guy's a genius. So uh, and then just talking to him, the guy, he's so funny, yeah. naturally funny. He doesn't know he's funny. Yeah, he is one of the funniest people I ever met. Anything he says, he's like an alien. It's yeah, like totally he's from Mars and he's living on this earth and it just doesn't make sense to him. Uh, so the guys who were producing The Last Drive-In got in touch with me right around the same time and said, hey, did anybody come in from those stage people that might be worth it to help? on the last drive and I said absolutely this guy Yuki Nakamura he's awesome he's hilarious <laughs> and they they brought him on and then wow. just throughout the years just when we got picked up after the marathon Yuki came down and worked with us in Dallas he designed the uh, the interior the exterior all that sort wow. of stuff and him and I roomed together oh my god that's gosh. where it really started to marinate you and I. <laughs> oh yeah once you start once you live with someone yeah that's it best yep. friends best friends because you a you... symphony of snoring oh yeah. i bet <laughs> now in my head it was one bed and you were both wearing like long kerchiefs and nightgowns <laughs> Tell me I, that's I, what it was. There were certain nights that were like that. I mean, you know, I would come in blind drunk and he doesn't drink. So I'd crawl in the bed with him, not know where I was. And I'd have the cap on. Hell yeah. But by the way, a... sorry. It's so cold in my apartment. I had to put on my ween uh, knit cap. It's freezing. Dude, it's oh, I great. see you've got the gloves on. Okay, great. Yeah, he's wearing his Dickensian street urchin gloves. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> he's, you're in good company. Yes. Yeah, so you wear the hat, I'll wear the gloves. Yeah. <laughs> All right, beautiful. Um, um it, yeah, we just got uh to know each other really well. And yeah. then even outside of work and stuff, we started hanging out. He's just so funny to talk to. And he yeah, any topic, I'm talking anything from astrophysics to uh you know Shakespeare to uh G Godot. Uh, it's it doesn't matter. Waiting for Godot, he knows yeah. like uh, he has an analysis. It's crazy. The guy knows everything. <laughs> he it's... has notebooks just like filled yeah. with stuff. His yeah. Thoughts. And it's so funny because so you two have a Patreon together and the trailer that you released in tw I think 2022 <laughs> yeah, it's was Yuki getting lost in the back rooms. <laughs> yes. You can kind of tell that Yuki is just kind of saying what he you told him to and probably doesn't quite know what the back rooms are. He had no clue. So I was really obsessed. There's the guy Kane Pixels or something his name is. He, he yeah. did the really big back room yeah. stuff. Yeah, A24 and, just they're going to they're releasing yeah. they oh, hired this kid in high school. Is the the high school kid is that it? Uh, I think so. Yeah, he was 16 or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, they they, got, they picked him up. He's like I'm making this in between my <laughs> high school graduation and now he's he got picked a up back by room A24. feature? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, I'm in. I, I, I love that. It's either going to be amazing or so boring. Yeah. yeah. But like that will just be a troll on us cuz yeah. that's the back Backrooms. Yep, yep. That's I'm pretty backrooms. sure that's the kid. But anyway, yeah. so yeah. so so yeah, so so this trailer, you came up with this concept. Yeah, it was just I was obsessed with it at the time, and I'm like, how could we, you know, because we were gonna do a regular trailer, and then we I went uh, when we were shooting in Jersey around the time of the pand like right after the pandemic, it was still people wearing masks and stuff, and me and a few people from the last drive in went to a movie in this weird ass mall there. And yeah. it was just empty. Wait, is empty. it the mall that's like mostly shut down except for the Cheesecake Factory and the movie theater? It seemed like that. Yeah. Yes, it probably yes. is that very place yeah. because I'm walking down. Parts of it look like an airport hangar. Parts of it look like a doctor's office. Parts mm -hmm. of it look like a mall. So I said, just as I'm walking down, I was like taking a little cell phone footage. I said, the best would be if Yuki narrates a backrooms adventure. <laughs> And it's all about the Patreon. <laughs> so it just worked out. I got all the footage there. Then I got some footage at our hotel in the in the middle of the night when nobody was around. And then when Yuki came to record one of the first sessions, I said, all right, Yuki, I need you to pretend that you're lost <laughs> and you don't know where you are. And I want you to just speak it all out loud. He's like, what do you mean? I was like, just just talk. 
Just trust me. You're lost. You don't know where you are. And I'll tell you little, you know, areas or whatever. Like you're lost in the soda fountain area. This, that. And he did it. And it's, it, he's it's as confused as it seems. I mean, he's truly lost. <laughs> he's truly lost. Just not for the reason we think. We will link it in the show notes. Uh-huh. Uh, Thank you so much. It's, it's, it's such That's a one of the watch. best things we did. And then we did... um. Uh, uh, similarly, around the same time, uh, We Love Buffet, it's a parody of <laughs> I Love L.A. by Randy Newman. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. And now, speaking of L.A., uh, oh, also, what? so the name of the Patreon and the podcast. It's Yuki and John's Patreon Buffet, but we also have a free uh, show that we do called Yuki and John's Podcast Buffet. Awesome. And Which is the great. Patreon, we have all sorts of videos. I do. Yep. We do a cooking show. We do podcasts that aren't. Uh, we do the universe and human stupidity, where we <laughs> study the universe from the standpoint of human stupidity. Because awesome. obviously, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just Amazing. like Yuki celebrity stories, it's there's a whole three, almost three hundred things now it's amazing amazing what yeah. a gift and i'm so glad you're doing this too because both of you seem like you have these insane life stories that i'm, right. I'm glad are being like put somewhere <laughs> yes. for the public record because yeah. because these things we don't often sit down and like write our life stories yeah um so i'm glad that you're like collating all of them that's a good point you make because the other day i was sitting there going half the stories that i told on this podcast i i don't like remember once I tell yeah. them, so it'll be good to go right. back. And if I ever do put out like a memoir or something, totally, that'll be a great way to remember. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost like a diary. Now you have like a diary, diary. of everything yeah. yep. of Plus, everything that you Yuki, have done. He uh, he's so um, he was so afraid of like going in front of the camera and stuff. Mm. Like he didn't want to do it. He almost like said no when Joe Bob wanted him out there for the Sunny Chiba episode. Only because he's like, why? I'm not I'm not an actor. I'm not I'm just a production designer. He just didn't get how interesting he actually was. Yeah. And now that we've done, I would say, close to a hundred uh episodes, he just is coming out of his shell and sharing all of his deepest, darkest thoughts. Amazing sweet Yuki. <laughs> and now what to do you the guys point, there was yeah, one but, thing that he said where I yeah. put it under a tier uh, in the Patreon <laughs> under twenty eight thousand dollars. <laughs> it will get him canceled. I mean, it's, <laughs> so if you want to cancel Yuki, pay us twenty eight grand $28, and dollars. we'll give it to you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, I would go even for more so he could just retire. Yeah, totally, you know. Like, well, just like he, it... he agreed. I said, "What do you think? What's a good price? Twenty eight thousand? He says, "That sounds good to me." I said, okay. "For his whole life to be over twenty eight thousand. Well, no, because then then we do the apology tour. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. And then more it's people want to know what he said, so right. then they'll pay the. And they right. come in. Yeah, hey. it's marketing. No See, such that's... thing as bad press, baby. <laughs> that's oh, smarter. Because no. <laughs> we were going to do a Patreon level where Dennis comes over and makes love to your wife, but oh. that doesn't like. That doesn't really serve anyone except the wife. You know, yeah. that doesn't like and get me. It. And no, you. it's yeah. the cuck chair. They have the cuck yeah. chair in <laughs> hotels. Cuck chair. That's why they're there. They have the cuck chairs. There's plenty of guys. It too. She's yeah. like, we'll, we'll be talking to our, our crew, our, our community online. And she's like, Dennis will come over and sleep with your wife. I'm like, no, no. You'll make sweet love to her. Do it. <laughs> so you said, I love LA, but you don't love LA because you came back here. Well, I so I do and I don't. I mean, there's okay. It's a love hate, you know. Right yeah. now, I know Shutter. Most of Shutter is based in L.A., right? And then, and, but well, you guys don't film in L.A. No, we filmed uh, first in Jersey. That was the marathon. Yeah. Then in Dallas for three seasons. Then back to Jersey for the pandemic because okay. we had like a special place that we were all by ourselves. And now we're in Atlanta. Okay. Okay, great. So you bounce between New York and Atlanta. Yeah. And sometimes at this LA point, at this point. Yeah. Uh, so, no, so, with LA, uh, I haven't been. No, actually, I went back a couple of years ago for yeah. uh, 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 last year. I went for the Monster Palooza convention for fun. Yeah. Hell yeah. What was yeah. your experience like in LA going coming from Brooklyn, going there, living there? Uh, it's it's a it's it's <laughs> it's like I said, it's a love hate. Some of the greatest people I ever met in my life. Yes. I met in LA. Absolutely. Yeah. But at the same time, there's. Obviously, the visual metaphor of L.A. that as far as I was concerned is there's the people on the hill and then all the people down on the bottom who Mm -hmm. are just pieces of garbage trying to make their way in. And every single person you meet has a dream. They all want to be a writer, an actor, a rapper or something. So no matter who you meet, even if it's the guy at California Pizza Kitchen, 
they're pitching you something. That, I mean, it's yeah. one time I was at a bar just like hanging out, and this guy's like, "Hey, man, what's your name?" I'm like, "I'm John." He's like, "I want to be a rapper." Flip it, dip it, dip it, dip it, and he's just like, <laughs> and I'm like, "Do I look like somebody who can get you somewhere? What the fuck are you rapping at me for?" <laughs> so that element of it was really awkward, and because I I never really liked to lead with the fact that I am in the arts or want to be an artist or right, want to right, make movies. Right, I, I like to yeah. meet the person first, get a sense of them. And then if I could sort of either trust them or think that they can maybe help me, then I'll do it. But yeah. I don't want to burden anybody with my stupid ideas about my dream of three ray, whatever. Yeah. So, <laughs> but there's a lot of people out there who just start immediately. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm the best artist that you've ever met. I'll do this and that and the other thing. And it's like yeah. really difficult to deal with people on a personal level. In yeah, and way. you're told you're told that that's what you're supposed to do. You know, it's like right. you got to tell people what you want and who you want to be, and then you right, never right, know who you're going to be. Right. But it just creates an entire culture of people going like, "What can you do for me? Yes, I haven't even met you yet. What can you do for me? Right. And yes. the second you have a little bit of success, you the people start coming Vultures. out of the what? It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. it's crazy. Mm -hmm. But I again, I did love L. A. I loved. I, some people say, and I've heard people say that there's no culture in L. A. I think that that's absolutely garbage. There's so much culture there's a in lot L. A. Culture in L. A. There's uh, there's yeah. museums like the Museum of Jurassic Technology. I, I don't think anybody's ever spoken about this thing. It was one of the greatest museums I ever went to. I've never yeah. heard of this before. It's in Culver City. Maybe it closed down during the pandemic. Culver City's but... awesome. Culver yeah. City's great. And yeah. when whenever we play GTA Five, <laughs> whenever we play it, I'm like, man, I want to go to L. A. Like, because yeah. you know it's based on L. A. And Los Santos. Los Santos. Like, yeah. I, I I like L. A. Like, I do like yeah. it. I, I just I've always Bethany and I are trying to figure out how we can be. Well, it's nice because you can kind of be a filmmaker and be anywhere at this point. Yes. Yes. Um, you know, sometimes you got to go out and work there. But we're like, we want to because we, we live in the Hudson Valley upstate now. New York. Oh, great. Yeah, it's wonderful up here. And we're like, how do we stay here and make movies here? here. So the first project we're doing, our first big project, we're literally filming in the house that we're renting. So we're like, Amazing. great, this is awesome. We could just make a movie here yeah, and, and in the yeah. surrounding areas. And like, we went around like filming and no one cares. They're like, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, do you want to see a permit? They're like, no, no. We want, you need help. I'm like, oh, because <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing. you can't film in L.A. You need a permit. Yeah, There's yeah. no gorilla. Yeah, you filming. gotta go through. Yeah. You gotta go through everything. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah I so made a short were... in L.A. It was all all paperwork. I mean, oh. it was just so yeah. brutal. Yeah. yeah. You were there for 10 years? Uh, no, eight and a half, nine years. Okay. Um, and you know, I, again, I loved it. I, I was most of the time I was there. I was, uh, I delivered food for two years and then I was a food, a dispatcher at like a proto rub hub seamless type deal called LA oh. bite. Nice. And it was a great flexible job. I was like three to 11. So nice. I could still go out afterwards. It was like, it was a great time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I great yeah. Time. I have two funny stories about LA that I'd love to share with you. Okay. First time I was there, I was 18 years old. Uh, and I was recording a record for Tommy Boy Records. They wanted to have an alternative band on their label, so they oh, signed. Shit. Yeah, so they signed a band. They signed my band. I, w I was like just a for hire though guy. Like, but I but I wrote a couple of the songs on the album. So I go out there and I used to smoke. And so we go into this bar and I light up. And they're like, what the fuck are you doing? And they're like, you can't smoke in here. I'm like, there's, I said, there's ashtrays on the fucking table. And he yeah. goes, those are for show. And I was like, that's L.A. <laughs> that's L.A. And we, that's but we, LA. Were in the we were in the thick of it, you know. Oof. And then the second hilarious story was I went back years later. I, I, I did a commercial out there and we were filming in this house. And the director comes up to me and he goes, they just filmed a porno here two weeks ago. I was like, oh, really? <laughs> I was like, he, he's like, yeah, they rent this house out like crazy for that. And it was like, they also rent it out for commercial shoots. I was like, cool. So got, one of the guys comes up to me and goes, this place looks familiar. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, dude. I know what you've been doing in your hotel room. You've I was like, holy shit. Yeah, I was like, you've been yeah. watching some porn. Watching some smut. So yeah. that's LA to me. Yeah. I still love it. I want to go back at some point. Yeah. Don't know if I want to live there, but yeah. Would you ever go back? Do you think? Oh, I would go back if there was an opportunity, but I, I no. would, after that opportunity was over, I would leave. I, I wouldn't live there for the rest of my life, but right. I would gladly live there for like six months, a year, totally. whatever. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. I, I delivered food to this uh, this birthday party. It turned out to be a surprise party for Cameron Diaz. Oh, wow. 
and it That's was the crazy um, shit that happened. It was yeah. crazy. Fucking, yeah. I, 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 I almost knocked over uh, Pamela Anderson. <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, like uh, the fucking uh, Drew Barrymore was there with like a mariachi band, being like, "Okay, guys, sit up over here." <laughs> it, was, it was actually later on. I found out it was Mick G's house, and it was around the time wow. of the wow. second Charlie's Angels. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So that to me was just like. I can't believe I'm here in this room with these people and I'm it's delivering so weird. taquitos. <laughs> <laughs> Did they tip well? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. That was the beautiful thing is uh, at a certain level over like 100 or something, there was a built in 20 percent gratuity. And that nice. was at that Holy time. Shit. That was before people were all about yeah. tips. Nice. It was a good night for me. Good. good. good That's good. awesome. Yeah. Well, John. We've been talking for like 75 hours. I want to be respectful. Um, oh, I don't care. Just keep okay. me on the line. I, <laughs> okay. I don't smell the salmon yet. So, oh, well, I do know there was there was one thing that I was I wanted to oh, ask. Yeah, please, uh, please, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About my one of my heroes is Fabio Fabio Frisi. Oh yeah. And I saw when you played with him on the show, mm -hmm. yeah. and he sat in. I mean. Well, first of all, I don't want to downplay like how good your band is on the show. Oh, Big thank feet. you so Big much. Feet are amazing. awesome. Yeah, like, thank you. It's also amazing how you you know you also interweave like skits in the show. You all act in it. Yeah. Um, there was this great like there was this great skit where you guys are all sitting around a conference table. <laughs> the airline stitches. sketch. The airline <laughs> sketch is so good. Um, but that's why I love the last driving because you get so much more than the movie, yeah. you know, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of the fun is what happens in between. But they were doing a Lucio Fulci sort of uh, retrospective. And he's, yeah. I think he's my favorite. Like he's at Bava and Fulci are my favorites. You know, everyone was like, yep. but what about Argento? I'm like, Argento's great. I like Fulci and I love Bava, you yep. know, but F Fabio Fritzi was the one who did. He did all the soundtracks mm -hmm. for the Fulci stuff. And you and that was like such it was so amazing to see him play with you guys what was that like like were you like holy shit i'm sitting with like a, a yeah. horror legend yeah it was it was insane i uh, uh justin martell who's one of the executive producers of the show set that up because he's been friends with fabio Fritzi for many years i mean they they put on a show in brooklyn maybe ten, uh, five ten years ago mm -hmm. where he came out and did the beyond and all that stuff Jeez. so when i got word that Crazy. um they were going to do a creative with that it was going to be a talk a late night talk show and then fabio Frizi was going to be the in-house band i was so excited and then they said and by the way you get to do the opening and closing song of that Oof. and collaborate with Frieza. I was like, what? The maestro? I get to collaborate with the maestro? Mm -hmm. So we built uh, the last drive-in theme and we had him just play sort of like an organ part to it, just mm -hmm. make it more like a late night thing. But thank you, maestro, I wrote, because I, I couldn't think of how to close that episode with a song other than thanking yeah. Fabio yeah. Frizi for being there. Yeah. So I just wrote a, a thank you song to him. And it worked out and he loved it. He played the solo on it perfectly. Yep. Yeah, yep. yeah, it was just like so. And and just now I, every once in a while, I'll get like a message. Hello, friend. How are you today? Oh. How you been? It's just like, oh, good, Fabio. How are you doing? What's up? It's, <laughs> it's so funny because we, you know, we obviously didn't didn't know you until like an hour and 15 minutes ago. And when we were watching that, those episodes, mm -hmm. um, we, we said to each other, that must be so fun for John. Like oh we didn't God. even know you. We were like, that yeah. must be such a thrill. Yeah, uh, that's what it is, is a thrill. And then uh, uh, on top of that, his band was amazing, too. They were all very nice, mm -hmm. cool Italian guys. <laughs> and at one afternoon, everybody was working. So I got to drive them around because they had some errands to do. They needed to pick this and that up. And I brought Fabio and his band to, um, I think it was Ross or Marshall's. <laughs> <laughs> Ross Dress for Less? Yes. Yeah. Because Holy he needed cow. a jacket. He forgot a jacket. So he was like trying on Looney Tunes jackets, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> it was a great afternoon. And I just said, I just got to hang out with the maestro and his band for like two hours and take them around and make jokes. And But it was funny because they would like pick things up and, and be like, what up, 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 like question what this is and then it'd walk up to me and be like what is this and i'd be like oh that's an encrustable that has peanut butter and jelly inside they're like oh it's too rich for me it's delicious even when frozen <laughs> that's, that's incredible. so funny it's an encrustable. how do you say encrustable uh, in uh, uh, it's like it's a pastry it's a dessert it was like no you can eat it as a snack too he's like america 
<laughs> and he just, he looked like such an affable man. So I followed him on Instagram and he messaged me immediately. He was like, Aww. Dennis, grazie mille for the follow. I was like, oh, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, like, he's, he's such fuck, a he's sweet. Yeah, he's so like nice. the sweetest man. Sweetest yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's still so much to talk Dude, about. It's just, uh, do you ever, do you ever like, you know when you <laughs> it's in there it's in I there i do mm, sometimes <laughs> it's when you've sort of been just living your life and just following one stone to the next stone and walking along the path as it kind of leads you to something have you ever stopped and looked back and got and gone like i have done so much very yes, recently so yeah much yeah recently i look back because i i keep a lot of archives for myself i i don't throw away anything like you know notebooks i have 14 notebooks just right next to me right now like Hell yeah all the stuff so i went back recently because i moved and i started to look at all the things and all the ways that i developed over the years and the different things that i've tried and I was very happy that I wa didn't shut myself off the way I think some people kind of do. It's um, I think a lot of artists say, OK, I'm only a screenwriter and I will only be a screenwriter yeah. and I will never do anything else because that's it. And if I don't make it. But if you open yourself up to be, I don't know, say a grip or anything and you get on a set and you meet people, that's the thing is like to open yourself up in an art while still focusing on the main art that you want to make. Yeah, was very helpful to me. That's you a know? a that's a lesson that Dennis and I have been talking about a lot because it's it it the younger you can do it to the better because sure. you get to learn those skills at a time when it's okay that you don't know them. Absolutely. Um, because no one expects you to know everything when you're 18, 19, 20, 25. Yeah, and so. Um, it's a lesson I wish I had learned. It's a lesson that you both learned young, and I think it has served you well. And I'm glad that it's something that you guys are like passing along yeah. as really important because it's really important. And not well, just yeah. in the arts, in like right. whatever career you want to sure. have. And yeah, one thing, anything. Yeah, one thing I will say about that too is that I mean, I'm I'm 46. So like and I just started like I just started making movies because Same. music was like my yeah, so like music was like my thing for so long. Mm -hmm. Um thankfully you have made like a career from it, but like I couldn't break through in that way. Um and then I was like lost for a while and then I was like I'm just going to go make movies, you know, or do I did photography and then I started making movies and I'm grateful it's happening in my 40s actually yeah. because I yeah. know I know more. You know, and yeah. I can, and I know more about storytelling and I have more life experience and weirdly 46 is still young for a director. Yeah. Like you really sure. don't get really good until you're in your like fucking seventies. Yeah. Like some people peak early, but that's a good time. Yeah. Like I, I am almost glad it happened like now rather yeah. than later. And a lot of that too is just watching Joe Bob and hear him talk about films. And it's like, Hey, just go out and shoot your movie. Yeah. Do it. You know, that's the best advice you could ever give anyone, no matter how old you are. If you have an idea, just go out and shoot your movie. Exactly. And at this point with nanobots and biotechnology, yeah. Yeah. we're going to live to 150 <laughs> at least. So we're good. <laughs> yeah. I'm psyched. And I like mean, AI, look, do you know about this thing? AI. Imagine AI, AI could listen to your podcast and write a book for you. Yeah. No. You and Yuki. What? Yeah, you and Yuki should do this because I want to read that fucking book. I don't think it's out yet, but there I, I read about this service that is like in beta now, but it's coming in. It will take all of your podcast episodes and put them in a book. That so, is imagine okay. your book with Yuki. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like okay, I'm not anti AI anymore because I want that book. I want to <laughs> read that book. <laughs> I know that book rules. That book because because I also picture it has. I don't know what it's gonna what the actual one would look like, but it had better be bound in like leather. And yeah. I don't <laughs> like leather, but this one better be bound in leather, leather. Yeah. with like a clasp. That's a claw, yeah. you know, holding onto yeah. like a ball. Yeah. Gotta be sick. Beautiful. I, I'm in. Oh, let's yeah. do it. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm down. Well, this was absolutely wonderful. Such a joy. This was, you yeah. are, I knew you'd be a joy to sit with. Thank you so much for doing the show with us. Yeah. 
And thank you both for having me. This is uh, such. This was such. This was a long time coming. We got in touch in November, yeah. and now we're uh, now we're finally here. But yeah. uh, just thank you so much, and let's keep in touch. Totally. Please. Yeah, you're totally. the first person in 2024 that we do. We're doing the interview with. Yeah. So this is the first checking in with in 2024, yeah. and I'm so glad it was with you, John. Yeah. yeah. So please plug all your stuff. Tell yep. everyone where it is, uh, where to go. Where to uh, the last you. drive-in we have a special coming up. I forgot the exact date, but it's in February, right before. For uh, February 9th nice. on Shudder for our Valentine's episode. Hell yeah. And then uh, our new season, season six, begins sometime in March. I don't think that we have the exact dates yet, but that's coming. And then uh, if you guys could check out Yuki and John's podcast puff buffet or Yuki and John's Patreon buffet. <laughs> And then keep an eye on my social medias at Bad Techno on Instagram, on Twitter, on uh, www.badtechno.com. All my stuff's up there. And uh, yeah, thank you guys I so much. I'm uh, super impressed with your consistent branding as someone who has like seven different social media <laughs> handles. I was like, I I also <laughs> yeah, it's it's too much. I, at one point, I was like doing other names. I used to have like yeah. eat wheat bread and all this stuff. And I said, no, just <laughs> eat keep wheat it to bread. One. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, yeah. Um, John, you're wonderful. Thank you so Such much. A joy. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone. Tune in to the last driving with Joe Bob. Watch, watch, please. Just for the music alone. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, the, it's the best. The movies are great. Uh, that's it for us on yeah. Checking In With. Thank Bethany, you, for you joining want to take us, us out? Uh, thank you so much, gentle listener, for joining us on this episode of Checking In With. We can't wait. We never have an ending. Never did this. We can't Hogzilla! 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 Hogzilla!